Hello, it's Keith here, and this is the seventh in the simple series. Today we're going to be looking at the NES, or of course the Famicom, they're basically the same system, and we're going to be learning about bitmap drawing. We're going to draw some simple graphics on the Famicom, and we're going to use the tile map to do this. So let's go over to the today's source code and see it in action. Okay, so here's the first example, and we won't talk anymore, let's just get it loaded up and see it running. So here we have it. Here we have a little smiley face icon. That's the first test, just a simple single tile. This would be ideal if you were just starting up a little game, you know, it's a simple way of getting a graphic on the screen. And you could use those 8x8 graphics for your characters and the enemies and things, or to build up a bigger tile map. But as an extra example, I'm going to show how we can draw a larger character as a sequence of tiles. And so here it is, here's our Chibiko mascot, and um, we've made this up of a sequence of tiles because this is a 48 by 48 sprite. Well, bitmap made up of tiles, sorry, it's not a hardware sprite. I don't want to use the wrong terminology there. So um, let's have a look at the source code and let's learn how this example works. Well, the first thing we're doing is we're defining a series of zero page entries. Uh, I use them to simulate Z80 registers because I find that an easy way to think of things. So I've got a HL pair here, which is typically our source, a DU pair, which is typically the destination, and a BC pair, which is kind of a byte count in some cases. So that's the start. Now, the rest of the code here is going to mimic very much the Hello World series in which we looked at the bog basics of getting a cartridge running. So um, we're going to skip over this a little bit quickly because I don't want to go over the exact same content again. So please see that episode if that's something you need to brush up on and also how to build the ROM file and load it in an emulator. But we've got a sort of generic header here. We're defining a zero page entry for the VBlank event and we're defining a interrupt handler which will note that vblank has occurred because that's something we need to do. We can't write to VRAM outside of vblank so we need to be able to check that vblank has just happened for this simple example. So then we are just loading up an, a pointer to the palette here and we are copying the palette in from the pointer just here and we're defining the colors here in reverse order and so this is defining our Chibico palette which is a black background, purple, cyan and white here. So we're defining four colors. We're using all of the tiles as the same color in this simple example. So that sets up our colors. We've also just reset the stack and um, turned interrupt off here. Um, that doesn't affect the NMI though. That's a non-maskable interrupt so um, that, that can't be stopped under any circumstances. So that, that's why we can turn off interrupts and that still works. Okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to need to transfer our bitmap character into VRAM with this define tiles function and this is actually the same as the one we used for our font and so we're going to look at that in just a moment let's have a look at that bitmap first though here it is so we've got a smiley face and you'll see that the graphic format is a little bit odd on the NES now the NES uses four colors so that's two bits per pixel but we actually have it in bit planes and that means all of the bit zeros come first and all of the bit ones come second so you can see here the smiley face because that's all in color one, but then the mouth is in color two, so you can see it in ones here and in zeros here, and then the eyes are in color three, so you can see the ones here, but you can also see ones here, and because one in bit zero and one in bit one will make up three, so that will create our image for us for the tile. Now, when we see the more complex tile image, I'll show you a very easy way you can create valid data for you, so you don't need to worry about this, but I did just want to briefly explain it. And so it's the defined tiles routine that's transferring the bitmap of length defined by calculation here in BC and to the destination address, which is going to be hexadecimal 800 in VRAM, and that's tile number 128. This is assuming we might have a font in memory, you see. We actually haven't loaded one, but it's assuming we might. And our defined tiles routine down here is a simple sequence here. Now, first, we're turning off the screen here. Um, the assumption is this might happen at the start of the program, so um, you know, not during gameplay. So we're just turning off the screen, and that's because we can only write during VBlank unless the screen's turned off. And so we're just setting the enable bits to zero here and storing that to the PPU control here. That's turning it off. And also disabling the NMI non-maskable interrupt there. Just turn that off. So that turns off our screen, and now we don't need to worry about actually whether the VBlank's occurring or not. Then we select our destination address. Now, where's the code for that? It's got to be around here somewhere. Oh, it's just down here. 
looking not looking very well okay and this is very straightforward so we just load the high destination byte to 206 store it in 206 and then the low destination byte in 206 here and that selects the address we want to write our data to so now that we've selected our destination address with this command all we're going to do is read in the bytes from our source data that's smiley and keep writing them to address 2007 here and that is the PPU data port which puts the data into the address selected with 2006 just here and you can see we're just repeating until BC reaches 0 here and that, that will do things for us there now I've done a little bit of a trick here I've loaded X with C just to save just to make some better efficiency in this loop here but effectively what we're doing is we're using Y as an offset to the low byte and then we're just altering the high byte here and that makes things just a little bit more efficient here and we're only incrementing H not incrementing L so that, that's just a little bit of an a, a tweak I made to this code to make it a little bit better now once we've finished defining the tiles we need to turn the screen on again and we just write these parameters here to 2001 and 2000 here to turn the screen back on so that defines our bitmap here that's that smiley and once we've done that we just need to select a screen location and you can see that with this get VDP screen pause and we'll have a look at that just here now this selects the video RAM address in the same way using that port 2006 and the address is pretty straightforward the base of the tile map is hexadecimal 2000 the tiles each use a single byte the tile map is 32 wide so we multiply the Y position by 32 add the X position and then add hexadecimal 20 to the top byte and that will calculate our memory address now if you don't understand that don't worry about it you can just use this code as is and it should work for you but um, as I say we're, we're effectively multiplying by 32 by repeatedly shifting to the left here and then we're just adding the X position storing the low part then calculating the same for the high part here and just doing the same here and that should calculate the correct memory position for our character there now this wait frame routine will be executed just before we select the address and the way this works is it's waiting for the V blank to change now it's writing a zero and then waiting for that value in V blank to not be zero well what's going to cause that V blank value to not be zero well it's our non maskable interrupt handler just here which will increment that V blank value and that happens automatically when the screen starts redrawing but it only happens at the start of the screen redraw so by waiting for this we're effectively waiting for an entire frame and this is going to be quite slow but the only alternative is to use a buffer I've covered that in my um, platform specific series but it's a bit complex and this is really a bog basic beginners series so I'm not going to use it here but you, you want to look at that if you need the speed which you're going to really want at some point in your game so get started with this have a bit of a play with the hardware and then move on to something a bit more advanced when you're actually serious about game coding so there we go so that's what we're doing once we've selected that address we then just transfer a tile number for our smiley tile 128 to the video data port ppu data at 2007 and that will do everything for us now the only difficult thing with this is um, when we write to video ram it actually messes up the scrolling position so we need to reset the scrolling position and we do that with reset scroll just here and these are the default to allow the top left tile to be visible in the top left corner which is going to be easiest for us and we just do that by writing two bytes to 2005 for the x and y position so that's the basic example we'll just run it one last time not very exciting but it's what we've got we will be coming back to this and adding joystick controller to later date but that's what we're doing today just that simple one then we've got our more advanced example just here and here's our Jubico so there we go it's quite nice now let's have a look at how we actually created that image then so if I scroll down here you'll see that now instead of the smiley in bitmap code we're including a file and we can make our own file or you can I've already done it so if you download the sources 7-zip there's a copy of Acre Sprite Editor my free open source sprite editor you just load up in a bitmap here and if you go to 6502 Nest Famicom save raw bitmap that will save the file in the format that you can see just here and that's what I used for today's example so yeah that, that's how you can create the file um, the start is exactly the same this define tiles routine is identical the only change to this entire example is this fill area with tiles routine now you see if I just get that 
get that back on the screen and zoom in a little bit, you'll see there's a kind of checkerboard pattern here. Now that's an 8x8 tile, and so this 48 by 48 image is six tiles wide and six tiles tall. And you see it's been split up in, in that, and then we're going to have to rebuild it on the screen as a sequence of tiles in the correct order. And that's what fill area with tiles does. So what we're doing is we are using D as a tile number, we're using B and C as an XY position, and we are using X and Y as a width and height here. And so what we're doing is at the start of each line, we're getting the memory position using that get VDP screen pause of the start of the line, and then we're moving across the line, setting all the new tiles, jumping back to the start of the next line, and then writing consecutive tiles again. So it's going in a linear zigzag format like this. And so obviously Acus Byte Editor has outputted the, the tiles in the same format as this example will work. If you'd created your own, you might need to change something, you know, go down and then up or um, right and then left, whatever, whatever you've done. But as I say, this is left to right, top to bottom in that order. So we're just incrementing D here, repeatedly storing to, to 007, which is of course automatically incrementing whenever we write to VRAM. And we're just repeating for the X line. When we get to the end of the X line, we're then just doing the next Y line, increasing the ZC here, which is the Y position for get VDP pause. And that will just sequentially fill that tile map graphic to the screen. So that's really all there is to it to get that little Chibico character to the screen. Now, of course, if you wanted, you could do things with sprites. The sprites are going to be a little more tricky as a beginner because there's limits to how many can be on the same line and things. So um, if you're really getting started, I think tiles are going to make things a little easier for you. The other thing is that the way I'm doing things here, it's not going to be the fastest way because we're not using a buffer before writing to video RAM. I have done some tutorials on sprites and also on using a buffer with tile maps. They were more advanced though, so it's outside of the scope of this example. But um, please look at my other Nest tutorials if you want to see more on how to do things a bit more efficiently with buffers or with sprites. But I think this is a good starting point for if you're just trying to get your first graphics onto the screen and have a little bit of fun with the Nest. We're going to be continuing with this example, as I said. We're going to get joystick control and we're going to move that smiley around a little bit, give you something to start up with. But anyway, I hope you found today's example interesting. I hope it'll inspire you to have a bit more of a go with the Nest. Um, if you've liked this, you know, please have a look around and see if there's something else you're interested in, either on the NES or one of the other systems. I'm covering lots of systems now. I'm doing Z80 tutorials, 6502 and 68000, covering all the major systems. I'm also starting 8086 tutorials with MS-DOS. I'm doing ARM tutorials now, just starting those, and I'll be doing RISC-V very soon. So um, whatever it is you're interested in in assembly language, hopefully you'll be able to find something that will excite you and you'll enjoy. But whatever you do, I hope you'll enjoy the NES and I hope you'll enjoy programming. So thanks for watching today and goodbye.